every day that passes is another day that we get a step closer to the release of FIFA 22. And going through this step by step, yesterday on the 10th of August, EA did reveal some new information about FIFA 22 Ultimate Team. And today we are going to be going through absolutely everything, doing a deep dive on everything that has been revealed and telling you everything that you need to know. Before I do get into the video, if you enjoy the content here and want to see a bit more from me, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. Ever since this channel was first started back in March, we have been uploading the latest trading tips and tutorials in FIFA 21. But for the last month, month and a half, we have been doing nothing except talking FIFA 22, giving you the latest news and latest information. And once FIFA 20 22 is finally released we'll be moving on to the best and latest tutorials so if you do want to stay up to date then make sure you are following the channel and getting back into the video every single year for fifa ultimate team the concept remains the same you still want to build your dream team by using chemistry and position modifiers and you'll be using the transfer market to buy and sell these players if you need a helping hand to build your ultimate team you will then buy packs and this is where it feeds into the business model for ultimate team but around your ultimate team we have different types of game modes as well as changes to some of the previous game modes that were already part of the game with fifa 22 it is no different the latest trailer that ea have released shows us some of these new additions as well as some of these changes the first change to talk about is division rivals how you progress through division rivals and earn rewards has completely changed because now it is made up of a completely new ladder system you'll still go through divisions but now it's also made up of different ranks and the higher your rank will reflect a better reward for your weekly rewards you'll go through different types of stages which are the individual steps between each rank and ea have also said whilst you're trying to go through these different stages you will also come across checkpoints these checkpoints prevent losing progress and ensuring that players remain at their skill level ea have also said that winning a match moves you forward by one stage but every time you lose a match you'll go back a stage unless you hit one of these checkpoints if you draw any matches, you'll stay in the exact same position, and if you manage to go on a winning streak, you'll actually progress a lot further compared to just one every time you get a win. So for example, if you've won two rival matches in a row, play a third and you win that one, you will move up two stages rather than just a single move. The goal with this division rivals change is that everyone starts in division 10 and slowly builds their way up so that eventually they get into a position where they're at a very similar skill level to those that they're facing. This does mean that placement matches at the beginning of Ultimate Team has completely been removed. They are no longer a thing. We all start in the exact same position going through Division 10, very much in a way that it used to be. For those of you that are very good at Ultimate Team, you'll have the opportunity to get to Division 1 and progress beyond this because there are now new elite divisions. Elite divisions is a new tier of competition beyond division one. The elite divisions is where the best foot players in the world can compete. The progression in an elite division changes to a skill rating system, which players might be familiar with in foot 21. All players in elite divisions are ranked based on their skill rating with the top 200 appearing in the global leaderboards. This is where your rewards will be a lot better. Weekly rewards in Division Rivals are earned by winning a set number of matches before the end of the week. When the week closes out, you'll receive your reward based on your rank you're currently in. The higher you climb in Divisions and ranks, the better your weekly rewards will be. If you start the week in Division 5 but make it to Division 4, you'll receive the reward for finishing in Division 4. Along with these rewards, we also have Seasons and Milestone rewards, which is new to FIFA 22. Division Rivals is now moving over to a seasonal competition tied to an overall foot season, which is approximately going to be 6 weeks long. And whether or not you win or lose your matches when going into Division Rivals, you'll always progress towards your seasonal rewards. In these seasons, you'll also have your Milestones. Once you achieve these certain milestones that's where you'll also be rewarded there has only been one image of the milestone so far and it is only the entry level so the milestone is for milestone one it's in season one and you're in division three and the task is for you just to play three matches to reach milestone one and for this you'll get a small prime mixed players pack which is untradeable once you progress to the second and third milestone it should increase in the reward just like it will increase in difficulty either by you needing to dedicate more games or do something specific, kind of like what we have with objectives. Once the season is finished, it all starts over. 
Progression resets to a lower division for all players and the division a player rolls back to will depend on which division they finished the previous season in. With all of these big changes coming to division rivals, it also brings some big changes to foot champions. EA have said this year they want to make foot champions more accessible for those that are still willing to spend most of their week in playing this game but also allow other players to go through and still claim rewards despite having other time commitments. They've done this by breaking it down to a number of different stages. The first stage is qualification. To get access to foot champions, you'll continue to earn champions qualification points in division rivals. Once you've accumulated enough points, you'll be automatically entered into what is now known as the playoffs. The playoffs are the first leg of the overall foot champions competition, and it is open for the duration of a whole first season. Players will progress through a limited number of games in their own time, earning points towards champions ranks and rewards. Once you've earned enough points, you'll unlock a finals qualification token granting access to champions finals, allowing you to continue participation in the competition. If you're unfortunate enough and you wasn't able to make it to the finals, you can always return to the playoffs after re-qualifying through rivals. The foot champions finals will take place on the weekends, using the same duration that was used for the weekend league in FIFA 21. EA have said that these changes to the champions qualification process is a limited entry system that allows you to decide when and how to compete in foot champions. Within each foot season, you will have a limited number of attempts at the champions competition with a single entry good for an attempt at the champions playoffs. I understand when reading through all of this, it might seem like they're talking about accessibility, but making it seem like it's a lot longer and you have to play more matches just to enter foot champions. But as soon as you enter these playoffs, you have technically entered foot champions. You are now competing for the first set of rewards and a chance of qualifying for the finals. If you manage to get to the finals, wherever you finish will decide traditional rewards on top. If you manage to finish all your matches in the finals, you can claim your rewards instantly. If you still have matches to be played, your rewards will be granted by the end of the competition, based on where you finish. It took me quite a few times to actually watch through the trailer and also read through the deep dive for me to actually understand this. It's one of those things as as you keep on reading, eventually you start to understand it a bit more. One of the best things I think to do is actually just wait until this game is released and then try to understand it then. Because it is hard to explain and also difficult for EA to get an understanding out of there when they are only showing limited amounts of gameplay. With Ultimate Team, these are the game modes that most players are looking at. These are the ones that are giving out the biggest rewards, it leads to more players playing, and of course it means that EA are going to implement more changes here than anything else. But they have also made some changes to the menu. It's keeping a very similar style to what we have in FIFA 21. You will still be going across different tabs and selecting what you want within those tabs, but the tabs have been reorganized. As it is one of the most popular gameplay features in Ultimate Team, Squad Builder Challenges has been moved. It is now part of the Home tab. It makes it easier for us to now be able to go into the transfer market, buy players and back out or go into squad builder challenges and submit different teams rather than having to go to the transfer market, buy players, back out, go all the way over to play, select play, go across to squad builder challenges and then try and find the SBC through there. It does make things slightly easier. There's also been changes in how you access your stadium customization as they've removed that as a button. You can now find that under your club tab. They've also said that there is a new player view system. But in all honesty, these changes don't seem to be massive in the grand scheme of things, but it just makes life slightly easier. It's just one of those changes. The next big area that EA are putting emphasis on is customization and how you customize your stadium. With FIFA 21, it was the first time that you was able to customize your stadium. And it was such a successful feature that they're even starting to move it over to other game modes in FIFA 22. We have already seen that you'll be able to customize your stadium in career mode. But sticking with FIFA 22, they're trying to go a bit more in depth with this and in new ways that you can customize. This comes into new types of VIP areas. There is also new crowd customization. There's new TIFOs that you can add to your stadium. And there's also new search improvements for you to find these different types of items you can buy off the transfer market and apply it to your stadium. 
Just like what we have with FIFA 21, there will continue to be seasonal themes. And as you progress through the season, you'll be able to unlock new different types of items, which you can then apply to your stadium. This is another one of those features, which does make it a bit more in depth and it does make it better, but it isn't a massive change in the grand scheme of things. As said, the biggest changes come to division rivals and foot champions. The final thing that was said within the ultimate team trader was about heroes. Now with this topic, we have already covered it quite a bit on this channel. If you do want to see that video, there will be a link in the description down below, as well as there'll be a card top right on your screen right now, which you can click and it'll take you directly to that video. It explains exactly what are heroes, what they do, how the chemistry has changed for these types of players, and also all the players that have been revealed so far, plus also some of the heroes that have been leaked. But anyway guys, that is everything worth knowing about Ultimate Team in FIFA 22. There is also a few other things that EA have revealed, such as gameplay settings, celebration camera settings, a few little changes with matchmaking, but it doesn't really compare to some of the stuff that we've talked about in this video. If you do want to read a bit more about that, you can always head over to the FIFA 22 website, where it does talk about Ultimate Team, and you can find everything that we've talked about in this video, plus also those other settings which you're interested in. But anyway guys, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. But for now, I'm going to see ya.